The small child standing here is Charlie Bucket, their only child. Come on now. Here you go, Grandpa Joe. Cabbage soup. Tell me, every day, nothing but cabbage soup. Cheer me up, Charlie. Tell me, what's the chocolate man? Wonka's got a new bar out. Fudge Whipple or hollow base? Mallow, with flavor shifter. Flavor shifters? My. Papa, what's the latest cap count? One million two hundred three thousand perfectly installed toothpaste caps, Charlie. Do you think all we're going to do face factory one day? Let's hope not, Charlie. What kind of positive thinking is that? Charlie's going to work for Mr. Wonka making chocolate bars. Now, Grandpa Joe, don't go fooling the girls' head with dreams of candy. But Charlie's from a long line of distinguished candy men. And women. Wonka hasn't hired anyone since Slugger's spy stole his candy balloon recipe. He got so mad, he gathered everyone around saying, I'm sorry, but you all must go home. And then he locked the gates of the factory forever. But Wonka still makes candies. I can smell them on my way to school. Yes, but no one goes in and no one comes out. Shadow work. Maybe the undead. Who knows? Grandpa Joe, you're going to give Charlie nightmares again. What, what did she say? She said she's making bathtub gin. We're playing gin? I'm in. Charlie, run out and see if anyone's done up the newspaper. Okay, Dad, you'll have to feed Grandpa George. You are, Dad, cabbage soup. I thought we were playing gin. <laughs> See these kids? They meet outside Charlie's house every day after lunch with a shiny nickel apiece to buy a candy bar from their local candy man. The only child with no nickel is Charlie. It's the candy man! What are you going to get? Hey Charlie, help me pick something out. I got a nickel. You've already got a lollipop. Can you finish it first? I love candy. All candy. Chocolate, caramel, jawbreakers, suckers. Stop it! You're making
I eat more, I eat more, I eat more, I eat 
like rush from one course is getting bigger by the minute. And this just in, a second morning ticket has been found. We are off to our live remote in San Paulo, Brazil, where things are sweet for Veronica Soul. That's Veruca, you imbecile! Veruca, Veruca, Veruca! <laughs> now, Miss Soul, I understand you've sweetened Veruca's chances with a little assistance. As soon as my little girl told me she simply had to have one of those golden tickets, I bought hundreds of thousands of Wonka bars. I'm in enough business. Peanuts, cashews, but mainly Brazil nuts. So I had my factory girl stop selling Brazil nuts and start selling rappers. Mommy, that hideous reporter said my name wrong on live television. Can't you get him fired? For you, dear, anything. Anyway, after a decent selling chocolates, one of my factory gals finally found the lucky gold ticket. I let her take the lucky piece of chocolate home to her 17 kids. How generous. Mommy, now he's being sarcastic. I want him fired. You hear me? Fired, fired, fired! This is Finney's Trout with a sweet as German salad. <laughs> Please. I thought we agreed on that horrific. Fudge knows the best, and you know it. 
Show us what thinking positive is all about, Charlie. Go on, open her up. Now, don't be dis too disappointed, my darling, if you don't find what you're looking for. The thing to remember is that whatever happens, you still have the bar of candy. Yes, I know. For goodness sake, open it. Please, open it. You're making me jumpy.
eat it. That's quite enough. We should all go to bed. Can Grandpa Joe tell me one longer story? Just one, please? Okay, but no zombie worker stories. You need your sleep. Charlie, look here. It's a walk of Lenny Hurt surprise. Here, open it. But where'd you get it? I've been saving. I can't. I'm too nervous. You open it. Fine. We'll both open it. A lifetime supply of chocolate. One, two, three. Nothing. A good thing, really, because chocolate's very fattening. You're right, Charlie. A lifetime supply of it. You'd be the size of the dome on Capitol Hill. I wish I never heard of Wonka or candy. Cheer up, Charlie. Give me a smile. What happened to the smile I used to know? Don't you know your grin has always been my sunshine? Let that sun shine. Come on, Charlie. No need to frown. Deep down you know tomorrow is your toy. When the day
I hereby swear not to touch, assign, malign, share, tear, or wear, party of the first part, so on, whereas the damage caused by lightning, earthquakes, floods, fire, frost, or flippery of any sort, kind, or condition, sequentially be understood to responsibility, whereas during the terms of this agreement you will become and remain at your sole cost and expense of your request, member of the same promise, person, your means. Ah, just sign here. Not without my lawyer. Let me give him a ring. No television reception, no mobile phone reception. Bye bye. Ha! Where do I sign? Mr. Manga, just how many rooms has your factory? Good question, Augustus. In the Wonka chocolate factory, there are several thousand rooms. I'll show you what some of them are. In this room here are the luminous lobbies for eating in bed at night. And that room there, the exploding sweets for an enemy start a fight. In this room here is the rock candy mine, they say that it's three miles deep. Marshmallow pills you munch when you just can't sleep. Little rooms, big rooms, high rooms, low rooms. Seventeen hundred candy shows. Small rooms, tall rooms, bathrooms, ballrooms. And your fine shopping in almost all rooms. In this room here are the chocolate cows from which we get chocolate milk. And that room there are the hot ice creams for a cold day smooth as silk. And in every room are chocolate beers. with a 
chocolate smell of it. It's a shame, really. The boy really seemed to know about food. Alas, take Mrs. Bloop's poop to the strawberry dipping room and heat him to precisely 102 degrees Fahrenheit. This is Celsius. No Fahrenheit. 102 degrees Fahrenheit, but no higher. And he may spontaneously boil. And that would be a tragedy. Because Augustus would be damaged? My dear, Augustus was damaged long ago. <laughs> the tragedy would be the wasted chocolate. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Blue, and good luck. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please follow me as we continue our tour. As an elephant eats, what are you at? Getting terribly fat. What do you think will come of that? I don't like the look of it. Oopa loopa do many dogs. If you're not greedy, you will go far. You will live in happiness too. Like me, oopa loopa do many
Here we have the inventing room. This is the most important room in the entire factory. My most secret inventions are cooking and simmering in here. Voila! The everlasting gourmet gobstopper. It looks like gum! That's because it eats gum. Gum? The most marvelous gum in the world. Gum? Oh, no. An entire three-course dinner without any of those nasty calories. Gum. Unfortunately, it's not been tested, so we must not chew it. Gum! I only have a dream of life, there's very little to it. So I always think of a dumb gum and all that's long is chew it. I chew it all through childhood, I chew it when I win. If I survive the 95, I'll chew it till I'm dead. But well, this gum here is much better than that one. This gum here is three cost and pea soup, roast beef, and blueberry ice cream. Blueberry the nicest ice cream. after a three-course dinner. That gum is so nice. <gasps> it's delicious. It really tastes like pea soup. Oh, you cut the rock beef. It's fantastic. So tender and juicy. But the blueberry ice cream. I better sit down. That's what I'm worried about. The dye. Yo, Violet, you're so busted. That gum is gonna do it. Her candy pick on down the drain. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, my legal advisors have advised we not even taste the slightest drop of it. 
Come now, I have so much more exciting things to show you. Oh my, Mr. Walker, kids! They've left us behind. Grandpa Joe, what's that? Who's there? Hello? I suppose one tiny taste won't do any harm. Wow. Wow. I'm flying. I'm flying. There's no sensation, not quite as sensational as
to every bad nut. That chute in particular leads to the garbage incinerator. But don't worry, there's a chance it may not be lit. A chance? Well, yes. You see, it's only lit every other day. I can't remember if today's a burn day or not. Guess we'll find out. It's a shame, really. She was so deliciously bossy. A natural captain of industry. Oh well, onwards and upwards, backwards and forwards. Follow me, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue our tour. safety glass.
Well, I'd like to thank you two for coming. I'm sure you can find your way out. But what about Charlie's lifetime supply of chocolates? Yes, yes, every child will receive their lifetime supply of chocolates. Other than that, today's been a complete waste of time and chocolates. Goodbye, Charlie Buckets, and good day. Bless you, Charlie! You did it! You did it! See, Walker, it was my idea to try that. I created this contest with one purpose in mind. To find the next person to make new candy dreams come true. I don't understand. This was a test of character, Charlie. I carefully selected rooms that would tempt each of our golden ticket winners. You, Charlie, did something incredible. You gave in to your temptation. You were smart enough to get out of it, and yet you admitted your guilt. That'll be fine, and they'll each receive a booby prize. A lifetime supply of chocolates. That's the booby prize? What's the real prize? Charlie, do you love my factory? I think it's the most wonderful place in the whole world! I'm glad to hear you say that. Because from this day onward, it's yours. What do you mean? I'm giving you my factory! I need an heir, and that person is you. You want me to run this entire factory? What about Mom and Dad and Grandpa Joe and- The entire factory! Family can live here! I love you! I positively love you! Now Charlie makes everything she makes Satisfying and delicious